Shalom and good evening. 各位平安，各位晚安。It's lovely to be with you.、Um, thank you for all you that came back, and lovely to see all those that are here for the first time today. 好开心见到大家，有部分第一次嚟，有部分亦都喺今日诶、呃、都见过面。Now I'm going to have to ask you to forgive me for just one second while I my computer froze, so I have to unfreeze it. 咁我電腦咧就誒被凍結咗，我要再開翻佢。We're slave of technology also in Israel. Well,、uh, today what I'd like to talk about, it's going to take just a second. What I'd like to talk about is to the Jew first. 今日想同大家分享嘅講題係先是猶太人。This is taken from Romans chapter one and verse sixteen. 呢個係來自羅馬書一章十六節。Just one second. It's waking up. It's a good thing. Well, almost there. Or not? Just one second. There we go. Okay. Thank you for your patience. Here we go. Uh, I think the tech team may need to come and reconnect or something. I'll try to do that so that you can actually see it on the screen. But anyway, very very pleased to be with you here, and I thank Pastor So for the hospitality. 好誒，開心能夠同大家喺埋一齊，都多謝阿蘇牧師嘅蘇牧師嘅款待。And、uh, I bring you greetings from the believers in Israel. 我都代表喺以色列嘅信主嘅人向大家問候。This would be both Jewish believers. It's okay. I think it's got it. It's both Jewish believers in the Messiah and Arabic believers in the Messiah. 呢個包括咗信主嘅猶太人同埋信主嘅阿拉伯人。And if you were here earlier, you were able to see a one-minute clip from our chapel service at the seminary. 如果你頭先係喺度嘅話咧，都睇過一分鐘嘅短片，裏邊俾大家睇得到阿拉伯人同埋係猶太人一齊歌頌神。Jewish and Arabic believers worship the Lord together. 猶太人、阿拉伯人信主嘅一齊敬拜神。But、uh, what I want to share with you today, you know, and particularly zoom in on this verse from Romans 1:16. 嗱，今日就想集中嚟嚟睇羅馬書一章十六節。Is really not about Jewish people. 實際上唔係係講猶太人。Because what it is about is about fulfilling the Great Commission. 事实上所讲嘅系我哋要满足嘅大使命。Now, I'll begin by saying that from the very, very beginning of the Word of God, of God's revelation to us, His purpose has always been the salvation of all of humanity. 神嘅話語由頭到尾咧，其實都講及係關於對全人類嘅救贖。And I'm saying this because I want to take a few minutes and ask the question: If God wants to save all of humanity, what's the purpose of Israel? 咁係喺講呢個講題嘅時候，實際上要問到，如果我哋係要去拯救誒、呃、全人類嘅話，咁猶太人喺當中又扮演咩角色咧？ That will become relevant as we look at what it means to the Jew first and why it's the key to the Great Commission. 需要理解到乜嘢叫做係先是猶太人，呢個先至係滿足大使命嘅要訣。So on this strange-looking graph there on the screen, we can see a summary of the human condition in Genesis one to eleven. 呢幅圖就睇到咧。人境況啊，由係呢一個誒創世紀開始到到末了嘅時候，嗰、那個境況係點 ？And in Genesis one, to, well, Genesis one and two, we see Adam and Eve in the idyllic state. 喺創世紀一同二章咧，我哋睇到亞當夏娃咧喺個好理想嘅環境裏邊。And these are things as they're supposed to be. 咁實際上佢哋應當就係喺咁嘅情況。Adam and Eve with complete communication with God and with one another. 佢哋同神同埋彼此之間係一個有好完美嘅溝通。Genesis chapter three, sin enters the human reality。第三章講到罪進入世界。And it changes everything。而罪就改變咗好多嘢。Human nature is corrupt。人嘅本性咧就敗壞啦
humans are separated from God through sin. And there is tension between humans, between Adam and Eve. Now, in the following chapters, things get worse. Chapter 4, we have the first murder. Chapters 6 to 8, we have the flood. The human condition got so corrupt that God had to wipe it out. And only eight people survive. The righteous Noah and his family. And we think to ourselves, well, it's probably going to be better. They learned the lesson. But after the flood, it gets even worse. And when we get to Genesis chapter 11, we see that all the humans of the earth all got together in this great valley. And they have an unholy purpose. Genesis 11:4 reads, and they, and they said, Come, let us build for ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach into heaven, and let us make for ourselves a name. So really, as we see, the word that repeats itself is us, us, ourselves, and us. The humans are saying, already then, they say, we don't want to give an account to God. We want to reach heaven ourselves. We want to get the glory. We, want to give an, we don't want to give an account for our lives. Now, importantly, as they begin to build the tower, as they planned on building the tower, we read that all the earth is speaking one language. Now, if you think about it, you know, language is, is something very important in the human experience. Is how we talk to one another, how we talk to God. So perhaps now the most common language in the world is uh, Mandarin. But back then, the common language was Hebrew. So if, if we were living at that time, you know, I would speak in Hebrew and you will understand, you would understand me. And, and we would need Ivan and you wouldn't have to suffer through my English. <laughs> but the point is, the point is that they're all gathering and it seems like God is taking it seriously. And the reason chapter 11 is such an important chapter in human history is because God directly intervenes in human affairs and he mixes the languages. For the first time in the human experience, something fundamental has changed for the worse. So humans are not just separated from one another. Not only, not only are they separated from God, but now with different languages, people are starting to further separate into groups. For the first time in human history, there are people groups by language. For the first time in human history, there are nations. There were no nations before that. There were families, families, not nations. So the human condition is worse than ever. And God's plan for the plan for the salvation of humanity seems to hit an all-time low. And why am I telling you all this? Because it is in this context that God calls 
Abraham. 係喺個咁樣嘅背景裏邊咧，神呼召亞伯拉罕。Yeah, it's actually his name is Abram at this point. 當時佢嘅名咧，佢叫亞伯蘭。And God tells him, I'm going to make from you a nation. 神同佢講，我要係藉住你建立一個大國。And this nation will have a special purpose. 而呢個國家會係有一個特別嘅使命。To bring all the other nations to God. 要帶領萬國去到神面前。So let's read together Genesis 12:1 to 3。咁讓我哋讀係創世記十二章一至三節。我哋大家一齊讀啊。Now the Lord had said to Abram, "Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you." I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. 又话对亚伯兰说：你要离开本地、本族、父家，往我们，往往我所要所指示你的地去，我必叫你成为大国。我必赐福给你，叫你的名为大，你也要啊对别人得福，为你的祝福的，诶、呃、为你祝福的，我必赐福与他，那救助你的，我必救助他，地上的万族都因你得福。In those three verses, we learn several important things about God. 咁喺呢几节经文咧，我哋学习到关于神嘅几样嘢。First of all, if you look at those three verses. What does God want to do? Look, look at, look at the way. I'll give you a hint. It's in yellow. What does God want to do? 睇下啲经文，神想做咩啊 ？God's nature is to bless. 神嘅本性咧系想祝福。Is to bless us. 去祝福我哋。And to bless humanity, He chooses Abraham, and He promises him three promises. 去诶，为咗要祝福人类嘅咧，佢拣选咗亚伯拉罕，有三样嘢。He says, "I'm going to make you." A nation. I'll give you a seed. He said, "I want you to become a nation." And if you were here the previous session, you know that this seed is Isaac. He will give it to Isaac. And his son Jacob. His son Jacob. And Jacob's twelve sons, the twelve tribes of Israel. Jacob's twelve sons. And eventually, the tribe of Judah. 然後到到猶大一誒誒一個支派 ，and the family of David， 嗰度就出咗大衛一家 ，and ultimately the seed of Abraham， the Messiah， Jesus himself。然後尼賽亞耶穌自己就從嗰係走出嚟啦。God also says to Abraham， I'll give you a land。而神又話：我會俾你一啲地。You just follow me and I'll give it to you。你跟從我嘅話，我就賜你呢塊地。And the land is from the Euphrates River until the Mediterranean. 咁啊，呢一個呢塊地咧，係由啊幼發拉底河去到啊地中海。From the Sinai Desert until the Lebanon. 由西奈去到黎巴嫩。About five times the current state of Israel. 約莫係等於而家以色列嘅版圖嘅五倍。And most importantly, God says, "I will give you my blessing." 最重要嘅就係神話，我要祝福你。And this blessing is really the purpose of all this。而呢個祝福咧，其實就係整個計劃嘅主要一樣。Because through you, I will bless all the families of the earth。因為藉住你咧，我會祝福萬國。And I will protect you。而我會保守你。To make sure that my blessing gets to all the nations。要肯定我嘅祝福會達到萬國。Now。This is one of the first, if not the first, a conditional blessing God is promising humanity. 咁呢個咧係帶有條件性嘅第一個嘅俾人嘅祝福。Now in Israel, and I'm pretty sure in Hong Kong also. 咁啊，以色列或者香港都一樣啦。You walk outside on the street. 咁你喺街上邊行咧。And you ask people, would you want God to bless you or to curse you? 你會問啊，你想唔想神去祝福你，抑或咒助你咧？ You know, in Israel, probably like in Hong Kong, many people don't even believe in God. 咁喺以色列好似香港咁，好多人都唔信神嘅。However, just to be on the safe side, most people will say, "Well, I'd, I'd like God to bless me." 但系为咗安全计，多数人都会话我要神祝福我。Well, that's actually pretty simple. God says how you can obtain it. 咁啊，其实好简单嘅，神就系真系会咁做。And how you can get the opposite of blessing also. 但系我哋又点样可以得到呢个所谓祝福嘅相反咧 ？If you bless the seed of Abraham. 
。如果你係祝福阿伯拉罕嘅子孫 ，God says I will bless you。神話我都會祝福你。But if you curse the seed of Abraham， 若果你係咒助佢嘅話咧 ，God says I will curse you。神話我亦都會咒助你。And throughout, I'm going to be very brief about it. But throughout history, many, many, many people have tried to destroy Israel. 喺人類嘅歷史裏邊咧，好多好多嘅人嘗試係毀滅以色列。By the way, in the Jewish,、uh, in the Jewish year, we commemorate many of them. 咁喺啊猶太人嘅節令裏邊咧，佢哋好多時候都會係紀念到呢啲嘅日子。So. Pharaoh tried to destroy the Jews, and this is, you know, Passover. Ah, Pharaoh 王啦，佢佢想毀滅以色列，咁呢個就係逾越節。Jumping ahead a little bit, Haman tried to destroy the Jews. This is the holiday of Purim. Sorry, Haman tried to destroy the Jews. Haman 亦都係想去係毀滅以色列。You know, more recent history, the Holocaust. You know, Hitler tried to destroy the Jews. 呢個大屠殺啦，希特拉想毀滅以色列。And so on and so on. 咁係諸如此類。But really, who is behind it? Who's who's behind trying to curse the Jews and why? 咁邊個人係想去咒助以色列咧？點解咧 ？Well, if the enemy of God is able to destroy the Jewish people， 如果神嘅敵人能夠毀滅猶太人 ，two things will happen。有兩件事會發生。One, he would prove God to be a liar。一咧就佢、是、會證明神係講大話嘅。Because God promised Abraham unconditionally, Abraham didn't have to do anything about it。因為神咧俾咗個應許阿伯拉罕係一個無條件嘅應許。And two， 其次咧 ，If he destroys the Jews, then if it was before Jesus' time, then the Savior wouldn't come。若果佢哋能夠喺耶穌嚟以前咧消滅猶太人嘅話，就唔會有耶穌咯。And in more recent time, if he's able to destroy the Jews, then God's final plan of Of to all the nations will also not occur. 嗱，近代啦，如果係能夠消滅以色列嘅話，咁呢個末日就好難嚟臨啦。So Abraham, being the man of faith that he is, gets up in the morning and go after God. He's not sure where it is at this point. 咁阿伯拉罕咧，咁佢就起身就去啦。喺當時佢唔知道佢佢去邊度嘅地方嘅。And now we go to we jumping ahead ourselves a little bit, and we say that. We and ask the question: What is God God's strategy for salvation? 咁而家我哋向前行，就問下啦，究竟神呢一個策略係點嘅咧 ？Now I'll start by saying, and I think I take great comfort in this. You know, God only has Plan A. There's no Plan B with God. 一定要留意咧，神嘅策略、神嘅計劃咧，只得一個嘅啫，冇所謂 B 計劃呢樣嘢嘅。Now you think about it. God only has Plan A. 你諗下。其實神只有呢個 A 計劃。Why is it so comforting to know？ 點解係咁肯定，但係我哋咁舒服咁諗咧 ？Because it means that God really means what He says and is not changing His mind。意思即係話神係唔會改變主意嘅。And if He says He loves us, He means it。如果佢話佢愛我哋嘅話 ，If He says He is giving us His grace, He means that。意思真係嘅，如果佢要俾恩典我哋，佢真係要俾恩典我哋。Offers us His grace。俾我哋佢嘅恩典。How did the Jewish people, the descendant, the physical descendants of Abraham, how did they bless the world? 咁阿伯拉罕嘅子孙系点样祝福呢个世界啊 ？Of course, ultimately, the greatest son of Abraham, as I said, Jesus himself. 系当然系阿伯拉罕最系出名嘅子孙啦，呢个就系耶稣啦。But also, we received the word of God through the Jewish people. 但我哋都藉住犹太人咧，我哋得着神嘅话语呢本圣经。God's special revelation to humanity. His word is through the Jewish people. Came to us through the Jewish people. 神对人呢个咁重要嘅特别嘅启示系藉住犹太人而嚟嘅。And about God's protection. 而关乎到神嘅保守咯。God's promise of protection: those that bless you, I will bless; those that curse you, I will curse. 祝福你嘅，我会祝福；嗰啲咒助你嘅，我会咒助。First of all, this is the only reason the Jewish people exist today. 咁呢个其实就系点解？猶太人到到今日都仲喺度。There's no precedent for precedent for that in history. There's no similarity to that in history. 實際喺歷史裏邊咧，冇其他嘅類似嘅嘅情況嘅。And God's strategy in those that bless you, I will bless. We also see it in the New Testament. 咁神嘅呢個咁樣嘅祝福嘅策略咧，喺新約都睇到嘅。And I'm sure you're familiar with the book of Acts, chapter one and verse eight. 大家大概都記得係《使徒行傳》第一章第八節。And this is the 
great commission. We also find it in Matthew 28, 28 uh, and here as well. And God says to the disciples, spread the good news. Start from Judea, Jerusalem. Start from Jerusalem. Go to Judea and Samaria. And go to the uttermost parts of the world. Now, I heard many times, I'm not a missiologist, but I did get the chance to hear and read in various places. That many mission agencies take that to say what God really means is here, near, and far. Now, in all, oh, sorry. So, when God says that to the disciples, what we should do wherever we are around the world, is start where we are, this is our Jerusalem. Go to our area, this is our Judea and Samaria. And then go to the rest of the world. It's not a bad application of that verse. But it not, it's not what it says. I mentioned earlier that God really means what he says. And I would like to make the case that what God really means when he says Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria and the rest of the world is really Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, and the rest of the world. Regardless of our geographical location. And in the words of the Apostle Paul, we are now coming to Romans 1.16. We read, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So what does it mean to the Jew first? Why should we go to the Jews first? Now, by the way, it means with the gospel. Go to the, with the gospel to the Jews first. This is what it means. Now, maybe that's because the Jews are better than everybody else. Believe it or not, I know quite a few Jewish people that think so. But there's just one, one little problem. That's not what the Word of God says. In Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 7, God says, I have not chosen you because you're smart or you're strong or you're handsome. I've actually chosen you because you're little and you're not very smart and not very strong. God is speaking there in Deuteronomy to the nation of Israel. And we see that same principle throughout the scripture. And it's true, by the way, for each and every one of us. God is not offering us his love and his grace because we're so strong, smart, and worthy. But rather because we're jars of clay that need mercy. So it does not mean to the Jew better. However, God is a king and he has a kingdom. And in that kingdom, there is an order. 
And throughout the scripture, there's a principle that keeps repeating. That has to do with God's order. And that is the principle of the first fruit. What does that mean? What is the principle of the first fruit? Well, I'll give you an example from ancient Israel. You know, in ancient Israel, it was an agricultural society. And the most important uh, crop of the year was the wheat crop. And um, they were were, uh, planting it shortly before the Passover. This is springtime in Israel. And something very interesting would happen on the first day of the Passover. On the first day of the Passover, the farmer would go through all his fields. And he, he had in his hand a, a batch of very colorful ribbon. And he would look at the at all the and all these fields wherever he see a bud of wheat. He would take one of the ribbons and he would tie it gently around the bud. To mark it as the first fruit. And then the farmer would, with, along with all Israel, would count 50 days, seven weeks. And throughout those seven weeks, he would tend all his fields. But he would particularly pay attention to all the buds that had the ribbon around them. Because these are the first fruit. And then, when the Feast of Weeks or Pentecost would have come, 50 days after Passover, and it would be time to collect the wheat, he would first go and he would only cut the first fruit, the ribbon. Wheat. And then he would take all of that amount, whatever, however much it was, he would take it and he would bring it to the temple. Because God promises in his word to bless the harvest if we give him the first fruit. Now here is an interesting fact. By the way, the first fruit, it's a similar principle to the tithe, but it's not the same. Why? I mentioned previously that the biblical calendar, the Jewish holidays, are calculated according to the moon. The lunar calendar. Like the Chinese calendar. Why is that important? It's important because sometimes Passover can fall as early as early March. And in early March, it's still kind of the end of the winter in Israel. So on the first day of the Passover, there would be very few buds that have already budded on the first day. So on that year, the first fruit given to the temple would be relatively a small amount. However, in some years, like this year, the Passover will fall Later in the year, sometimes as late as late April. Now, in late April, it's deep into the spring in Israel. And so, on the 50th day after the Passover, the first fruit will be a significant proportion of the harvest of that year. 
Now, what's important? It's not whether it's little or whether it's much. 重要嘅咧唔係話數量嘅多或者少。The important thing is the principle of the first fruit. 重要嘅咧就係嗰個原則，呢個初熟嘅首批嘅果子。Why is that important in the kingdom of God? 點解喺神嘅角度裏邊呢樣咁重要咧？ Because we know God doesn't need our first fruit. 神神實際上係唔需要呢啲嘢嘅。He's not interested in that respect in the material aspect of the first fruit. 佢唔會真係對呢啲誒呢啲物質上嘅嘢有咁嘅興趣。Because everything is His anyway. 因為所有嘢都屬於佢嘅。He's not limited. 佢實際上唔受限制。So really, it's about Where our heart is. 實際上係關乎到我哋嘅心態。And he is very interested in our hearts. 而佢對我哋嘅心係極之感興趣。And when we give him the first fruit, 當我哋俾神呢啲初熟嘅果子 ，we tell God we believe your word. 我哋話俾神聽，我哋相信你嘅話。We trust in you to bless the rest of the harvest, so we'll have plenty. 我相信你會祝福呢個莊稼。So that's what I mean when I say priority and order in the kingdom of God. This is what I'm saying in the kingdom of God. This is what I'm saying in the kingdom of God. This is what I'm saying in the kingdom of God. This is what I'm saying in the kingdom of God. This is what I'm saying in the kingdom of God. This is what I'm saying in the kingdom of God. This is what I'm saying in the kingdom of God. This is what I'm saying in the kingdom of God. This is what I'm saying in the kingdom of God. And obviously, in many other places, we also see that the Messiah is called the firstborn. 喺唔同嘅地方，亦都睇到神稱呼尼賽亞為佢嘅長子。And in some way, we can say that, you know, again, in some form, Jesus, the Messiah, is the first fruit. We read he is the first fruit from among the dead. The same principle. 咁係或者我哋喺度講到耶穌咧，佢亦都可以係呢個所謂誒初熟嘅果子嘅代表。So, what does that mean? How does that apply? To us today, 咁對今日嚟講，我哋可以學習到啲乜嘢咧 ？We are called to take the gospel to all the world. 我哋被呼召將呢個福音帶到去萬國。Everybody needs it. 每個人都需要呢個福音。The Jews needs it. 猶太人需要。The Arabs needs it. 阿拉伯人需要。Chinese need it. 中國人需要。Everybody needs to hear about this offer of eternal life. Love and grace from God. 需要知道，需要接受呢个来自神嘅一个永恒嘅恩赐。So God called us to the nations. 咁所以神呼召我哋去到呢啲嘅别诶其他种族中间。We should sow in Israel. 我哋应当喺以色列嗰度播种。I know that、um, for a lot of people in Hong Kong, there is a deep, deep care, longing, and calling to reach. The Chinese people. 我知道喺香港嘅基督徒有好多人係對喺大陸嘅福音係好有負擔，好盼望我哋嘅同胞都得著救恩。And I strongly believe in that call. 我深信呢一個呼召。So let me tell you something about how you can accomplish that. 咁或者我同大家都講下點樣可以達成呢個咁嘅願望咧。And I have to say it's completely not my wisdom. 實際上呢個亦都唔係我嘅智慧。So I'll give you the example of Hudson Taylor. 俾大家個例子，好似大德生咁。I'm sure that some of you, at least,、uh, like me, have read his、uh, his autobiography. 或者大家有部分嘅弟兄姊妹都睇過佢嘅自傳。And the great mission that God has given him to bring the gospel to the Chinese people. 神就俾咗佢呢個咁嘅使命，將福音帶俾中國人。And in his autobiography, this is not inside information in any way. It's in his book. 係呢個喺佢自傳裏邊咧，佢咁講。Hudson Taylor talks about this principle of the first fruit. 大德生亦都係講到呢個咁樣嘅初熟果子嘅原則。And he says that the the custom of the China Inland Mission. 佢誒講到內地會咧，佢哋當時嘅習慣啊。Under his leadership. 當時佢領導內地會咧。Was that the first financial gift that they have received every year? 佢哋每年收到嘅第一份嘅金錢上嘅贈獻咧，無論係大或者細咧，但係第一份嘅金錢上嘅贈獻咧，無論係大或者細咧，但係第一份嘅金錢上嘅贈獻咧，無論係大或者細咧，但係第一份嘅金錢上嘅贈獻咧，無論係大或者細咧，但係第一份嘅金錢上嘅贈獻咧，無論係大或者細咧，但係第一份嘅金錢上嘅贈獻咧，無論係大或者細咧，但係第一份嘅金錢上嘅贈獻咧，無論係大或者細咧，但係第一份嘅金錢上嘅贈獻咧，無論係大或者細咧，但係第一份嘅金 This was before the state of Israel was established. 呢個就係喺以色列復國之前發生嘅事
Now, Hudson Taylor didn't invent it. Oh, let me tell you a story about him before. It's in his book. He says that he would, whatever, again, whatever the amount, he would send a check uh, and send a note to uh, a very famous Messianic Jew in Britain at the time. His name is David Barron. And he wrote David Barron, I mean, he sent a check and he added a note to the Jew first. Now Hudson, and then David Barron, in turn, he had the same habit. He would take the first check he received every year. And sometimes it would be Hudson Taylor's check. And he would, he would send it back with a note and also to the Gentile and send it to Hudson Taylor. So my point is that the quantity is not the point. It's about the principle. And remember, we're talking about the gospel, the mission. Now, you know, uh, we go back to the scripture and we see in the book of Acts, the Apostle Paul says very, very clearly that his calling is not to the Jews. His calling, his purpose, his destiny is to take the gospel to the Gentiles, to all the nations. But six different times in the book of Acts, when Paul gets to a new territory, where does he go to first? Where does he go with the gospel first? To the synagogue, to the Jews. Well, we can say, well, maybe it was just because he was a Jew and he was used to it. And because he was used to it, you know, they were just kind to him and nice to him, and so he wanted to start with the Jews. Because we see that in the book of Acts, the Jewish people treat Paul very well. Correct? No, quite the contrary. He got Terrible treatment from the Jewish people. Many times they try to kill him. So Paul's, Paul followed that same principle. He was called to take the gospel to the nations. This is why he went first to the church, to the Gentiles, I'm sorry. God calls the Hong Kongese church to reach China. So, in the Jewish community of Hong Kong. Pray for them. So, in the people of Israel. Pray for them. So that like Hudson Taylor, he will give you China. Now, I wholeheartedly believe that this is what I'm sharing with you today is the, the heart of God for the world. And uh, the picture you're seeing there is... Um, taken from a chapel service at our Bible College and Seminary. And currently, in the state of Israel, there is a form of revival. From a very, very, very humble beginning, when the state of Israel was established, where there were three Messianic Jewish families in Israel when the state was established. 
When I came to the Lord, I never heard about Jesus when I was growing up. When I came to the Lord, I, I thought I was the only one. But at that time, there were about 20 Messianic churches in all of Israel. But now there are more than 200 Messianic and more than 150 Arab churches and congregations. I shared some more details in a previous session. But for those that weren't there, I'll just say that the current state of Israel is a democracy with freedom of speech and freedom of religion. So evangelism to adults is completely legal. In the last 20 years, several things have been happening in the Israeli church. First of all, the government tried and succeeded in pushing most of the missionaries outside of Israel. This was not so simple at the beginning, but what it caused is that witness to Israelis came from other Israelis. Now, for both Jewish people and the Arabic people, through most of church history, testimony came from outside, mainly from the West. And so it was very easy for Jewish people and Arabic people to say, well, this is you and your faith. And this is our and our faith. But they cannot exaggerate in the magnitude of the change. That for the past 20 years, the testimony to Jewish people and Arab Arabic people comes from within. It's Jewish people and Arabic people testifying to other Jewish people and Arabic people. And so there's a significant growth in the Israeli church. Now, um, you know, how many of you were in Israel? Show of hands. How many were in Israel? Yeah, quite a few. And uh, so if you were, you know that uh, the thing that Israelis like the most is their cell phone. It's kind of like in Hong Kong. Um, but you should know, I'll share international statistics about internet use with you. This is completely secular market research. Israelis are the number one people in the world in the time we use daily online. We are second in the world in the number of cell phones, smartphones, per head, per capita, in the world, after Taiwan. <laughs> but Taiwan manufactures smartphones, we don't. We just buy them. Taiwan Israelis are number one in the world in their usage of social networks such as Facebook, YouTube, etc. So what does that mean? Why, why am I making a big deal of it? I have some water for you. This is new, I didn't drink it. <laughs> 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 
Israelis are number one in the world in the amount of time per day of usage of social networks such as Facebook and YouTube. They are every day spending this kind of so called social network time in the world as number one. So why is that important? Why is that important? You know where our young people are? You know where our young people are? You know where our young people are? That's where they are. In the television. It's nothing to be proud of, but that's the truth. We are not proud of our young people, but this is the truth. So if that's where they are, there's a job for us to do. If you are directly able to find them, then we have something to do. If that's where, if that's where, if this is the wine skin of where they are, we need to take the gospel there. If this is where they are, we need to take the gospel there. If this is where they are, we need to take the gospel there. If this is where they are, we need to take the gospel there. And so, in the last eight years, we have made a very, very large investment of of manpower and effort. Come, so in the last eight years, we have invested a lot of time and effort. And we have created a platform of 15 different websites. That are just is made up of 15 different websites that tell about Jesus to Israelis. That are just made up of 15 different websites that tell about Jesus to Israelis. Those that were here in a previous session remember that I said when I grew up, I've never <coughs> seen a New Testament. So one of our websites is called the New Testament, meaning the document. And you can download the New Testament in Hebrew. And in Arabic. In text, in audio, in video. 无论系诶字又好，或者系诶你要嚟听广播又好，都得。There's a website that talks about rabbis that have become believers in Jesus. 又有一个网站专门介绍咧嗰啲拉比成为基督徒嘅见证。It's quite a few of those. 事实上有唔少嘅。We have a big website that talks about apologetics. 我哋有一个好大嘅网站咧，系讲到护教学。Different arguments as to why God. Many questions are about why God. Why Jesus? Why Jesus? Why Jesus? We are especially proud of our last project. We are the last project. And that is a website that is called messiah.co.il. messiah.co.il. That's the Israeli website. The name is like that. Like, like home. I mean, here it would be Messiah.co.hk, right? Yeah. So same, same principle. What we did. 咁啊，呢个网站俾大家啲咩咧 ？You know, we have a forum that connects all those websites. 咁啊，我哋有一个平台咧，系将呢啲嘅网站联喺埋一齐。And we took the most common 100. Questions that Israelis ask. We just sort of took the most common questions that Israelis ask. We just sort of took the most common questions that Israelis ask. We just sort of took the most common questions that Israelis ask. And then we made them into videos. And then we made them into videos. I want to say something to the tech people. You excuse me for a moment. 咁啊，想向我哋当中嗰啲专家嚟到讲几句话。Before I came here to speak, I asked Pastor So, "How long do I have?" 咁我喺嚟之前都问过阿苏牧师，我有几多时间 ？And he says it's the last service. You talk until ten at night, no problem. <laughs> Now I'm saying, <laughs> yeah, I'm saying this to the tech people because there's a red light in the back that flashes at me <laughs> in in Chinese characters, and I think it says, "Stop talking, stop talking." <laughs> So your problem is with Pastor So, not with me. So, Mr. Bishop, we can use how much time we want. But our recording team has different opinions. Anyway, I was going to show you a short clip from this website, but I invite you. I'm not going to do that. I invite you to visit our website. There's some of the some of those videos actually have English subtitles. Ah, invite everyone to go. 係探下我哋嘅網站啦，啲網站咧有啲都有英文嘅。And maybe with time we'll have also Cantonese subtitles, but we'll take a little bit of time. 或者總有一日可能有中文都唔定。So I will close here. I want you to remember what to the Jew first means. 我一定要大家去留意去理解乜要叫做先是猶太人。It's not about the Jewish people. 唔係關於猶太人。
It's about reaching with the gospel to the farthermost parts of the world. And to do that, we need to follow God's order as the king. Okay, now what I would like to do as, as I'm finishing up, I would like to ask the media people, the tech people, to put a short three-minute clip. Uh, we do have in our website some resources in Cantonese. You're welcome to visit. They're also in English, obviously. And I want you to know that we in the Israeli body of Christ are praying for Hong Kong. And we're praying for China. So I thank you for listening and I bless you in the name of Jesus.